Hello and welcome back to LDT 3135, Practical Project Management. I'm Dr. Tim Boilo, and in this module, our focus is on starting a project. As you read this, your first question might be, why are we talking about starting a project now when we have already done a project charter, a project management plan, and we just completed our fifth project sprint? Clearly, you now have some experience with starting and managing an Agile project, which is exactly the point. Our purpose is to build on this nascent formative knowledge and competency by bringing in the PMBOK knowledge areas of project scope management and project resource management. So let's get started. Here's our agenda for this module. We begin with a quick look at starting a project using the PMBOK standards. Next, provide a definition of project scope management. A look at the PMBOK processes for project scope management. Project scope management emerging trends and practices. Project resource management processes in PMBOK. Project resource management emerging trends and practices project resource management outputs, and next steps. Projects can vary significantly in terms of scope and resources. Beginning in the early planning stages, the PMBOK provides a fully documented set of project management process standards, regardless of project scope, life cycle model, or complexity. As shown in the PMBOK map, project planning functions touch each of the 10 knowledge areas. During project startup, there are two deliverables produced, the project charter and the project development plan, both of which are included in the initiating and project management process groups, respectively. Our focus in this module is on introducing the six PMI process standards for project scope management, which is PMBOK Chapter 5, along with the six PMI process standards for project resource management, which aligns with PMBOK Chapter 9. Starting a project also relies on the three PMI process standards for project communications management, which were introduced in Module 5. This brings us to our discussion of project scope management. There are two parts to this. The, project, the product scope, which specifies the features and functions that characterize a product, service, or result, and the project scope, which encompasses all the work performed to deliver a product, service, or result with all of the specified features and functions. The term project scope is often used to be inclusive of product scope. In an agile life cycle, product increments are developed using multiple iterations where a detailed scope or sprint backlog is defined and approved for each iteration during sprint planning. The PMBOK identifies six PMI process standards for product, project scope management, which are plan scope management. This is the process of creating a scope management plan that documents how the project and product scope will be defined, validated, and controlled. Collect requirements is the process of determining, documenting, and managing stakeholder needs and requirements to meet project objectives. Define scope is the process of developing a detailed description of the project and product. Create work breakdown structure, or WBS, is the process of subdividing project deliverables and project work into smaller, more manageable components and agile the work breakdown structure is the product and sprint backlog. Validate scope is the process of formalizing acceptance of the completed project deliverables or product increments. And control scope is the process of monitoring the status of the product and project scope and managing changes to the scope baseline. Projects using the Agile lifecycle model are intended to respond to high levels of change and require ongoing stakeholder engagement. The overall scope of an Agile project is decomposed into a set of requirements and work to be performed. This is the product backlog. 
At the beginning of each sprint, the team determines how many of the highest priority backlog items to include in the product iteration. In this way, three of the project management scope processes are repeated in each iteration. These are collect requirements, define scope, and create work breakdown structure, which as we've said is the sprint backlog. In an agile life cycle, stakeholders should be continuously engaged with the project to provide feedback on deliverables as they are created and to ensure that the product backlog reflects their current needs. To ensure stakeholder engagement, the validate scope and control scope processes are also repeated in each product iteration. There are a number of emerging trends related to project scope management discussed in the PMBOK, including eliciting, documenting, and managing stakeholder requirements. These practices include determining problems and identifying business needs, identify and recommend viable solutions for meeting those needs, elicit, document, and manage stakeholder requirements in order to meet business and project objectives, facilitate the successful implementation of the product, service, or end result of the program or project, and there are considerations for agile environments. Here, the focus is on is ongoing discovery and refinement of requirements using incremental product releases. The requirements identified in the project scope and work breakdown structure constitute the backlog. This brings us to the second PMBOK knowledge area I would like to introduce in this module, namely project resource management. There are also six process standards for project resource management. The first is plan resource management, which is the process of defining how to estimate, acquire, manage, and utilize physical as well as team resources. Estimate activity resource is the process of estimating team resources and the type and quantities of material, equipment, and supplies necessary to perform the project work. Acquire resources is the process of obtaining team members, facilities, equipment, materials, supplies, and other resources necessary to complete project work. Develop team is the process of improving competencies, team member interaction, and the overall team environment to enhance project performance. Manage team is the process of tracking team member performance, providing feedback, resolving issues, and managing team changes to optimize project performance. And control resources is the process of ensuring that the physical resources assigned and allocated to the project are available as planned, as well as monitoring the planned versus actual use of resources and performing corrective action as necessary to close any gaps. There are also a number of emerging trends and practices related to project resource management that are discussed in the PMBOK. These include resource management methods, the project may require use of one or more resource management tools for efficient utilization of scarce or critical resources. Emotional intelligence. Success in developing team EI competencies, which include self-management, self-awareness, and relationship competencies, is shown to increase team effectiveness and reduce staff turnover. Self-organizing teams refers to an agile approach in which the team functions with the absence of centralized control. Teams consist of generalized specialists rather than SMEs who continually adapt to the changing environment and embrace constructive feedback. The use of virtual and distributed teams enabled by communications technology can provide specialized expertise on a project regardless of geography and may provide accommodations for team members with mobility limitations or other disabilities. And there are considerations for agile environments. Here, we see that projects with high variability benefit more from team structures that maximize focus and collaboration to, bo to boost productivity and facilitate innovative problem solving. According to the PMBOK, there are two project deliverables or outputs associated with the project resource management plan processes. These include 
the resource management plan, and the team charter, which outlines the team values, communication guidelines, decision-making criteria and process, conflict resolution process, meeting guidelines, and team agreements. We conclude this presentation with next steps. Be sure to work through all parts of the course materials for Module 8, including all content, activities, and assignments. And as per the, the remaining modules in this semester, the only assignment for this module is the next sprint. Looking ahead, be sure to complete all associated readings in the course schedule as you prepare for Module 9. That brings us to the end of this presentation. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. Until next time, this is Dr. Tim Boileau wishing each of you a pleasant learning experience, and I'll see you online.